Hi everyone, my name is Sydney and I'm a program manager on the PowerShell team. The session is called VS Code and Notebooks, but really what brings these things together is the PowerShell Editor Services ecosystem. For today's agenda, I first want to give you an overview of the PowerShell Editor's ecosystem so you can get a sense of the various projects we're working on and how they all interact to create combined customer experiences. I also want to deep dive into notebooks and um, further explain what a PowerShell notebook is, answer the question how you might use one, what some of the top scenarios are that we're considering, um, show you how you can use one, where are the integration points, and I'm going to do a bunch of demos in this part um, to show you sort of how to get started across various different integration points and why you might use one versus another. Um, and then we'll sh I'll show you how you can get started writing your first notebook. And then finally, I'll conclude with a little bit of timeline and roadmap around the PowerShell notebook experience and when you can expect these integration points to really be fully fleshed out. So in terms of the PowerShell editor ecosystem, PowerShell editor services ecosystem, um, it really comes down to these two fundamental modules that provide um, that rich editing experience that we've all become accustomed to. So the first one is PSES. That's our PowerShell Editor Services module. Um, and this is what provides things like code navigation, um, semantic analysis of scripts, um, the debugging service, uh, the PowerShell PS Editor API, um, which allows you to interact with the host editor, and that full terminal-based integrated console experience for interactive development and debugging. Um, under the hood, um, this PowerShell Editor Services engine calls into another module, um, PSSA, also known as PowerShell Script Analyzer. Um, and this provides static script analysis um, of your PowerShell files. And this is based on a rule-based analysis. Um, and so in, um, for example, the VS Code extension, you can expect PSSA to be the thing that's responsible for your linting and your formatting. Um, a number of front ends connect into this PowerShell Editor Services engine. Um, so we have some, we have a Vim extension, Emacs, um, IntelliJ, and these are all run by community members. Um, in addition, we invest heavily in our VS Code extension, which is the most popular front end for our PowerShell Editor Services. Um, we have two extensions. We have a stable extension and a preview extension, um, but they're both essentially the same um, code branch, um, and they both call into the same version of PowerShell Editor Services um, and back through into PSSA. Um, to utilize the VS Code extension, it's available in a various in various marketplaces. Um, so it's available, of course, in VS Code and VS Code Insiders. Um, it's also available in Azure Data Studio. Um, if you aren't familiar with Azure Data Studio, it is a fork of VS Code that's really um, customized and pared down to um, focus on that DBA experience. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna demo that a little bit more today, so you'll get a chance to see Azure Data Studio if you haven't already. Um, two other places where the VS Code extension is available in the marketplace would be in Visual Studio Code Spaces, which is the in the browser version of Visual Studio, um, as well as GitHub Code Spaces, which is a really similar experience that in the browser full editing um, deal. With that, um, a new part of investment that we're going to be talking about a lot today is our .NET Interactive Notebook kernel. And so this has a few different integration points. Um, so today it's available in Azure Data Studio. Um, there is a preview out for a version that's available in VS Code Insiders, um, not quite available yet in VS Code. Also, we'll be demoing that today. Um, and then there's a number of other places where .NET Interactive PowerShell Notebook kernel um, can be used. For example, Azure Synops Notebooks, Jupyter Notebooks, um, and my binder all of which I will also be showing today. So looking at this diagram, you can see um, that the shapes colored in gray are the ones that are directly owned by the PowerShell team. So those are really our focus areas when it comes to developing the PowerShell Editor Services ecosystem. In particular, um, three of our focus areas are of course the .NET Interactive Notebook kernel, which we'll be focusing on today, but also I want to touch on the VS Code extension and PSSA because those are also places where we're heavily investing. Um, in terms of Script Analyzer, we're working on a major re-architecture of 
that module, as you can see, is pretty foundational to the whole editing experience. And so because of that, we believe by investing in performance gains there and better um, APIs and rule analysis, we can actually improve performance um, across the ecosystem. Um, we're also invested heavily in our VS Code extension and making that experience stable and performative. Those are really our two focus areas, um, and we're still working heavily um, in that. So with that, let's jump into notebooks. So for starters, what is a notebook? So notebooks combine rich text elements with executable code, and they're these interactive environments um, that are both human readable as well as executable. So it often contains um, maybe a description of what's going on, the analysis, as well as the results. Um, these notebooks originated in the data science and visualization worlds. You'll often he hear about Jupyter notebooks, um, which is one form of a notebook. Um, the term Jupyter comes from Julia, Python, and Ruby, um, which are all data science languages. And um, you can see that this developed from that space because of the rich, um, uh, the rich figures and tables and graphics that you can really um, create with them, along with these high processing executable environments. Um, that being said, we see the interactive experience as well as the automated experience around PowerShell is very well equipped to really leverage this notebook environment in a variety of scenarios that extend well beyond the data science and visualization world. Um, so you'll hear me talk about the notebook kernel. So the kernel is the computational engine that actually executes the code in the notebook. And these notebooks can run in a variety of local or hosted environments. So we'll see examples of both of those today. PowerShell notebook kernel. Where did it all start? <laughs> so it's currently in a public preview as of February of this year. Um, and it leverages the .NET Interactive kernel. So the .NET Interactive kernel is a multi-language kernel, which includes .NET, C Sharp, F Sharp, and PowerShell, and a single shared context. Um, so we chose to partner with .NET on this effort for a number of reasons. Um, one, it really allows you to have that polyglot experience where you can use each language to the best of its abilities, um, and you can combine those languages with a shared context, which can be really useful. And I'll show um, an example of that in our demo as well. In addition, um, this partnership really allowed us to gain momentum more quickly around partnerships and integration points. As you'll see, um, the kernel, uh, what, the big value of the kernel is that it can, can be um, used in a variety of environments. And so by leveraging um, some more momentum from this um, partnership, we were able to accelerate um, those integration points. Today, we are targeting support and learning as our two key scenarios. Um, and so you'll see we've developed some feature sets around that. And then our third key scenario would also be around um, visualization, which isn't always um, necessarily a native PowerShell experience but one that is useful nonetheless in this context. So in this effort, we have a number of key partners. And I first really want to highlight Azure Data Studio. Um, they have really led the way on this notebook effort. Um, in particular, I, no I noted that um, notebooks come from the data science space. And so I think for that reason, the DBAs in our PowerShell community have super led the way in the effort um, in uh, convincing us that it's worthwhile to invest in this kernel um, to really show us the value of it. Going into Ignite of this year, um, Azure Data Studio uh, had recently launched a notebook experience, and their number one customer request was PowerShell kernel support. Um, so because of this, they did um, take in an open source um, kernel that was available, um, and they had created a, a preview integration for that. Um, going forward, we've been working really closely with them so that we can have um, a kernel that's supported by the PowerShell team since they were unable to um, make some bug fixes and stuff into that kernel. Um, so we're still working closely with them on that migration story, but I just really want to um, kind of give kudos to some of the community members who, first of all, have been on this notebook kernel thing for years. Um, there's two awesome um, kernels, community kernels that have been around for a long time. Um, and then also all of our DVAs who really pushed us to um, invest more in this area. Um, as I mentioned, support is one of our really key scenarios. And so we've partnered with a number of internal support teams 
to ensure that we are making design decisions that really can allow for notebooks to be useful in this scenario. So in particular, we've partnered with SQL support, SharePoint support, Azure support, as well as data center support. Um, of course, we're closely partnered with .NET Interactive and the .NET team on this effort. And then we've also um, worked with some of the, our other integration points. Um, so VS Code and Azure Notebooks, to name a couple. Um, I've included a link here to VS Code's roadmap around notebooks. Um, so you can track that effort there if that's something you're excited about. So you might be asking, sounds cool, but how might I use notebooks in my workflow? So today um, I compiled um, a number of different customer scenarios I've heard from various users um, that we are thinking about. So first, uh, I want to create a troubleshooting guide for customers who use my stuff. Create support documentation that is repeatable and easy to share. I want to be able to run my support docs through CI and have it be source controlled. So this was one key um, area of feedback that came back through our support teams. That many of them use OneNote today, and that can be difficult um, in a collaborative environment because of source control issues, as well as the ability to run tests um, on your support docs. And because um, notebooks underlying are JSON, um, they can be treated as code, um, they are code, and so that allows you to run tests on them and source control them in the way you would otherwise in your repo. Um, I want to share my script with my teammate who is maybe less comfortable with PowerShell. This is a question I get all the time from users, um, which is that, hey, I really love PowerShell, um, and I want to share that with my team. Maybe I want to teach someone who's new to my team, or maybe I have users on my team who I want to be able to run my scripts, um, but they're not necessarily just comfortable, uh, as comfortable in the console on the command line as I am. Um, how can I help them? How can I build uh, structure around my scripts to make this more comfortable? And I think notebooks is a huge way to do this because of that combination of rich text and executable. So the person can really truly execute the code, um, but with that context around it to better understand what is happening and to have it be in a controlled environment where they're not necessarily needing to edit the script. Um, similarly, I want to teach X person how to do X thing in PowerShell. Um, huge potential for learning documentation because of that interactive, you get to try it out um, environment. Um, I want to visualize data I have acquired. So as I mentioned, this isn't something that is necessarily super available in PowerShell today, um, but because of the context that notebooks are running, we get some more rich visualization, which some of which I'll be able to show. Um, and I want to take advantage of features across .NET languages. Um, PowerShell is really awesome for a whole lot of things, but there may be some things that are just easier to do or better or more efficient in other languages. So if you are familiar with um, a number of .NET languages, as well as we have some integrations with um, JavaScript and HTML, um, you can take advantage of really the best of each of those languages in this shared context. All right, so with that, um, hopefully that gives a little background, but I think this will become a lot more clear through some demos. So let's jump right into it. .NET Interactive GitHub repo. So this is a great um, place to come for um, any documentation or uh, updates or anything like that around the kernel. Um, also where you can open issues or get support. So if we go down to the readme, um, we can launch this binder instance. And so if you're just first like wanting to kind of wrap your hand head around notebooks, you're wanting to play around with it, um, try running a few things, look at a few samples, this is definitely the place I would recommend checking out first. Um, so what my binder does um, is it takes your repo um, and creates a Docker image for it so that you can repeatedly share your repo um, with this com combined um, notebook experience. And so what we've done with this um, my binder instance is we have created a number of samples to show some of the varieties of features that we have. Um, and the other thing to note is that this my binder instance does pull our daily builds. Um, so you can get the very latest features um, through this. So um, for starters, this is a really simple example, but it helps to show how 
um, notebooks might be useful in a teaching environment. So what I've done here is I've taken essentially um, a blog post about for each object parallel, which is a really cool new feature in PowerShell 7. And I've um, taken the code examples and made them actually executable. So you can see, I get to see for each object process, the one, two, three, four, five. And I'll see that this takes five seconds to run. Versus now I'm going to use for each object parallel and I can try running that block of code and I'll see that it now is able to run in one second. So I also talked a little bit about um, some of our rich visualization, but to give you some examples, um, we have added a commandlet for out display, which allows you to specify a MIME type such as JavaScript, Markdown, or other, and um, HTML, for example, here. You can see that pop-up even comes up. That's a markdown. You can even display images. Um, and here's a, a great example of um, using a magic command, which specifies a language and then being able to have this rich markdown table experience. Um, we also made some investments in making this host an interactive experience, which wasn't necessarily something that was available in other um, PowerShell kernels, but we saw that that was gonna be really valuable in the notebook experience. Um, so here you can see we can change the um, foreground or conflict color. Here it's gray with that blue. Um, but what I really think is um, cool and you can see see some value in is this example with get credential, which shows um, the interactive experience really well. So if I run this code, it's gonna prompt me with my user, give me a nice prompt where I can type in my username. It's gonna prompt me for my password and then it's gonna create that credential object for me. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Um, and so there's a number of examples here if you if you want to check this out further. Talking um, with our support folks as well, um, another topic that came up was being able to use Cloud Shell in a notebook um, and really being able to authenticate directly into your Azure environment um, and then access resources through that. And so, um, we knew that that was going to be really useful in troubleshooting situations, especially um, around Azure support. So we added this commandlet, um, enter a Z shell, although it can be adapted to enter any number of remote environments. So today, if I run enter a Z shell, it's going to put me through this device login flow. Um, and then you can see there I'm right in my Azure directory. And so then this allows me to not only run these commands, but also you'll notice that there's saved output, which is a really key component of the notebook experience. Um, so say I want to collect a bunch of diagnostic data from my customer, what I can do um, is send them a notebook, have them run each step, um, and then save the output and send it right back to me so I can see exactly what they ran um, along with the output. And then they have some context around like what they're actually running and why they're doing those sorts of things. Finally, I'll show you some plotting. Um, so this, this has a lot to do with the visualization aspect. So you can see that I um, can create this nice line chart. And I'm using this out display, new plotly chart and out display commands here. I have a scatter plot and a whole number of, of other plots. So definitely check out um, this my binder instance if you're looking sort of to get an idea of what some of the features are available in the notebook and you just want to play around with things. Um, if you do want to create your own, you can add it with this plus button, create a PowerShell notebook and, and just have at it. This plus button will allow you to enter cells and then you can specify code markdown or, or raw. Um, if you want to play around with these and edit them, you can just double click. And then if you are looking to like save them long term, you're probably going to want to download them. Um, this my binder instance is sort of more temporary and sort of more of a playground to just try things out really quick and started in the browser. No need to install anything. 
you can just start playing right away. So once you're done with that, though, um, if you're kind of ready to start developing your own notebooks or you um, want to sort of have a more permanent experience, um, I would definitely recommend um, installing the .NET Interactive Kernel. So the kernel um, is available um, through the .NET tool um, as a NuGet package here. Um, so you can see that. Let's see. Cool. Um, you can see here, you can install it just from the command line. And then um, another great environment, super popular for notebooks, is the Jupyter environment. Um, so Jupyter has a, a few offerings. Um, you got Jupyter Lab, Notebook, and this these can be local or hosted. Um, so there's some instructions for installing those in our documentation, which I will link at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, but also if you search from it, it's pretty um, popular. So you should be able to find lots of resources for getting started. But yeah, launch. We have launched my Jupyter Lab from here. And this is the Project Jupyter site. Tons of you can see, try it in your browser, install notebook experience, all that. But here I have um, my instance all set up and you can see that it um, is going to pull from wherever I directly am in the file system. So you can see this is just my regular ordinary file system, very messy, you got my desktop documents, all sorts of crazy folders and that. If I go into downloads, I've got some good stuff in here that we can look at. Let's see. So I think this is a pretty awesome example because um, it shows how you can combine some of these features um, into something that's useful, um, but not necessarily available in other instances of PowerShell today. So in this situation, we're gonna connect into our AZ account. Um, we are going to use Writehost to set the context. And then we're going to um, get some of our VMs, pull them to their status, and then actually be able to graph that with a new Plotly chart. I also will show you This is a pretty cool example um, of how you can use these different languages together in a single notebook. So you can see this notebook is um, a C sharp notebook. So that means that the default language, if not specified, is going to be C sharp. Um, if you want to change the kernel, you can see you can come into this menu here. And that's um, the same as with my binder. You can change the kernel right there. But we are looking at this one right now. Great. And so um, why I like this example is it because it shows how you can use multiple languages together or in a polyglot scenario. Um, so here we're visualizing some COVID-19 time series data. So we're going to use PowerShell to pull in this data. PowerShell is great at this task. But then we're going to use C-sharp to clean the data. We're going to use R to do some analysis. Um, and then we're going to use HTML to help visualize this data. Um, and then also use some JavaScript um, libraries to help really um, flesh out that visualization. So you can see the combination of all these languages together, coming together, shared context, using the best of each language. Um, so that's a really, really cool example. Um, so if you are, um, if th this is great, but if um, you are looking for another notebook experience, I wanna show you how to use the .NET interactive kernel in Azure Data Studio today. So as I mentioned, um, Azure Data Studio is a um, fork of Visual Studio Code, but it's really optimized for the DBA experience. Um, you can see, for example, here, it has that native notebook experience already. I can, for example, see my server connections. Um, and that it has this same um, extensions marketplace as VS Code. Um, there, there aren't exactly the same um, extensions in both of them, but in some instances there is overlap, for example, with PowerShell. So you can see I have the PowerShell extension here installed. So that's gonna give me that rich text, um, editing, debugging experience. I'm gonna have my PowerShell integrated console and all that stuff that I love about the PowerShell extension available to me. Um, but I also am going to use the .NET interactive kernel for notebooks here. Um, so if you want to get started with that, um, the first thing you're going to need to do is install the .NET Interactive kernel, which I showed you earlier. It's that you can use the .NET um, tool and um, it, download it like that. And then if I go to my settings, um, currently um, this kernel is behind a feature flag because of a bug that I will show you today. 
Um, hopefully that bug will be fixed by the next release, which would, will be in mid-June. Um, so we shouldn't need that step after that. But if you want to get started today, I still wanted to be able to show you. Um, so you can see that there's this setting, show all kernels. So I'm going to want that checked. Now, um, if I go new notebook, you'll notice that it defaults to a SQL kernel. Um, and you'll see that there's the power, .NET Interactive Power Tool kernel isn't here. Um, and so that's that's the bug that I was talking about. However, if you click on, say, any Python kernel, then it's going to go back to your system and check to see if you have any Jupyter kernels already installed. And now you'll be able to select it. Awesome. And so what I wanted to show you here, too, is how you can sort of get started writing um, maybe your first notebook. So it's pretty um, user friendly, but if we do we add some text, we can have our title. This is the title of my first notebook. I'm having trouble typing. Woo, that's awesome. Great, um, and then I can add some code. And so now this is gonna be PowerShell code. And one thing I wanna show you here is that you can get that rich, um, uh, all sense and experience, rich editing experience um, from the PowerShell extension because it's still running here in your notebook. Um, so that's one real advantage of being able to use, um, for example, Azure Data Studio or VS Code with the notebook experience, kind of going back to that first ecosystem diagram we saw. So I can do, for example, um, run get date, run this, and it'll execute the code. Um, you also get that um, formatting experience. So like, and linting experience provided by PSSA. So you'll see I've got this rule. Um, it's an alias. I shouldn't use that. Let's do um, shift alt F. And now it's going to give me the full expanded name. This is a great place to um, author notebooks, um, that whole sort of thing. You can see. Um, the pretty intuitive experience of adding code. If you need to rearrange it, you can pull on these and move them around, um, add text anywhere. You can use like these rich texts. You can use this. Um, and if we do, let's do like a Great, so you'll see that um, because I am in my local environment, um, I have all of the modules that are regularly available on my system. One important thing to note um, is if you are using the My Binder instance, um, you will not have your local, since you are in this Docker image, you will not have your local uh, modules installed. And so for example, let me see if I can find a good example for this. Um, how about if we go here, samples, managing Azure. Um, you'll see that it's important to include this install module command at the start of your script um, to make sure that all the modules you'd expect to be there are there. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, but with that, um, you can go ahead and have at it and start building your notebooks. And then um, I want to give you a preview of the experience in Visual Studio Code. Um, so this is really early on um, in its development. It's still in development, um, so it's not a full experience quite yet. But if you're just excited about it, if you want to be part of the development experience, if you want to be part of the design, like I would super recommend checking it out because we are early enough both in the development of our kernel as well as these integrations that we're happy to make breaking changes. Um, and we really do want to know your scenarios and your requirements and your feature requests. Um, so if you're excited to, to try this out, um, I would definitely recommend it. But do keep in mind um, that particularly the, the, the VS Code aspect is very much in an early preview. Um, so uh, in order to get this working with um, Visual Studio Code, you are going to need insiders. And you'll want the very latest version of insiders. 
Um, then what you'll want is you'll, you, you'll have the PowerShell extension installed. Um, and then you're going to want to install this .NET Interactive Notebooks extension as well. Once you have that, you can create notebooks by using this DIB um, file extension. .NET Interactive Books, I believe is what that stands for. Um, and then from there, you'll have a pretty similar experience to the other notebook experiences we've seen. Um, so we can do like that. And you'll see you get that rich IntelliSense. Um, we can execute the cell. Um, and you are on your local system. So you it's the same with as with um, the Azure Data Studio experience where your um, modules, you can expect to just be there. Um, if you want to add some markdown, you can do that. Say hello. And then if you click that, it's going to render really nicely for you. So hopefully that gives you a sense of um, sort of some of the experiences we have available today and why you might use some of them. I'll just highlight again um, that if you do have bugs, feature requests, support, anything like that, please do head to the .NET interactive repo and open an issue. Um, if there's a sp specific integration point that's not working great or you have an issue with, also please open an issue there so we can help make sure we're accelerating that partnership and getting pa the PowerShell kernel in as many places as possible, as quickly as possible. Great. So there are our demos. Let's jump into roadmap. So as I mentioned, we are currently in a public preview state of this module. I'm sorry, of the kernel. Um, we are expecting to GA in alignment with .NET 5, which is targeted right now for fall 2020. Um, as I mentioned, you can get daily builds um, from GitHub um, .NET Interactive. Um, and we are also now available in Azure Data Studio, as I showed you behind that feature flag, um, as well as a preview in Azure Synapse Notebooks if you are somebody who uses um, sort of like those big data um, clusters. Azure Synapse Notebooks would definitely recommend checking that one out as well. And as I showed you, it is coming soon to VS Code. The experience is coming together, and we hope to have that available um, as soon as possible. So in summary, um, what I want you to take away is that the PowerShell Editor Services is an ecosystem of various modules and integration points, and that we have three key focus areas in tooling right now. The first being the VS Code extension, where we're really doubling down on stability and performance. The second would be PSSA 2.0, which is a re-architecture of script analyzer to hopefully pay dividends throughout the ecosystem in terms of performance, stability, um, compatibility, and configuration. Um, if you have requests for that re-architecture, please do go to the PSSA repo. We have a label right now, consider 2.0. Um, so you can check out the issues already under there. And then if there are certain features or issues that are not in those labels that you believe should be, um, please let us know. And then finally, um, our third main focus area right now is in the notebook experience. Uh, as a reminder, notebooks allow you to combine rich text and execution in an interactive environment. Um, and so be sure to try it out today and give us lots of feedback um, so that we can make those breaking changes now um, to make sure that the kernel ends up working for all your target scenarios. Awesome. Thank you.